Are you sitting in your kitchen right now with a cup of coffee or a cup of tea in hand, looking out the window, watching the people walk by, and you are wondering, what are you going to do today and this week? You looked at your schedule and there is nothing on the schedule. No soccer games, no driving somebody to somewhere, no plans at all. And you wonder, what am I going to do? How am I going to fill my time now that the kids are gone? Hi, I'm Heike. I'm the host of the Pursue Your Spark podcast, helping empty nester moms over 50 thrive in your empty nest. So today's topic is all about the empty nest and how to get unstuck. Before we dive in, please leave a review on the Apple podcast to let everybody know how much you enjoy the episodes here and that they should join us here on the Pursue Your Spark podcast for all topics, health, fitness, mindset related for women over 50. So let's dive in and get unstuck in our empty nest. I'm Heike Yates, a fitness and nutrition coach with 30 years of experience. I empower empty nester moms over 50 to take back their health and strength to feel vibrant in their second half of life. Right now, you're joined by thousands of empty nester moms around the world who stop dimming their light and instead ignite their spark. On this podcast, I do what I do best taking complicated information about fitness, nutrition, and mindset strategies, and breaking it down into baby steps that are simple, actionable, and reliable, so you can implement them into your life. I regularly interview some of the most inspiring guests who share their honest stories on how they went from their worst to their best in life, so that you know you're not alone in your struggles. Join me as we redefine what aging looks and feels like by taking action and saying, yes, I can. This is the Pursue Your Spark podcast. I am not a counselor, but I've had many conversations with other empty nester moms about their feelings when the kids are gone. And I'm an empty nester mom myself. Based on my experience and the conversations I had, I want to share some ideas and strategies to help you get unstuck in your empty nest so that you can move forward with an open mind and an open heart into your second half of life. We don't want to feel so lonely and quite frankly, feeling left behind. After years of putting ourselves last because we took on the role of a loving, caring mom and you still are that mom. But now you're no longer needed. We are no longer needed. The kids are grown and perhaps have their own family. And we're wondering, How and where do we fit in? What's our next step and what's our purpose in life? These are some of the questions you may ask yourself and not sure how to go about taking the next step moving forward. I talk about some of those steps you can take in my post, the five tips to plan for your for an almost empty nest when the kids are about to leave. And I'll leave a link in the show notes for you so you can either listen to it or read the blog post. And those are, or this is an excellent way to start for some of you who are having an empty nest looming in the near future. But what if your nest is already empty? What can you do if you're feeling stuck despite all good intentions of moving on? We are talking about the five tips to help you get unstuck in your empty nest. Have you put an empty nest into Google? I sure have, because I was curious what comes up when I Google certain words. And the first term that came up was the empty nest syndrome. 
and there is a mazillion posts on the emptiness syndrome. And I don't like that term, and I avoid using it like the plague, seriously. The emptiness syndrome is really not a medical term, but a phenomenon of sadness, loss, depression, loneliness that parents experience when the kids leave home. When my son left for college, I still had my daughter at home. And if you have more than one child, you can relate. And that loss is not so obvious, but it is. And I felt a profound sense of loss, even though I didn't want to admit it to myself. I worried that my son didn't have enough clean clothes, that he might have a terrible roommate, or that horrible things might happen since I wasn't there to protect him. A little bit along the line, he felt the same way because for the first few months, he came home every weekend under the pretense that he had to do his laundry. In my mind, I said, okay, he went off to college. We helped move him in, turned around and left. It's like, yeah, we got this. There's nothing that we need to worry about. But in the back of my mind, it just kept niggling away that he may not be okay. And I found it really great that he came home. He sat in his room, played his games, did his laundry, spent the whole weekend, and this kept repeating. And I said, listen, don't you have washers and dryers at your college? And he says, yeah, but you know, they cost a lot of money and I need quarters for that. And I was like, okay, I can give you quarters. Not that I wanted to push him away, but I think I wanted to make that separation for both of us a little easier because even though I didn't admit it, I missed him like crazy. So some signs and symptoms of the emptiness syndrome are that loss of purpose. So for years, you were the go-to person for your kids and their needs. Uh, You would put on band-aids and boo-boo pads on there and you cook delicious meals. You would help with the homework or then later on, we're helping moving in and out of dorm rooms. But all those jobs are gone. So now you're wondering, what is my purpose in life? What am I meant to do now? I raised kids and now what? Then the emotional stress is a big one in in the empty nest syndrome. I mean, I still do, but I always chalk it up to menopause. Do you break out in tears when watching a sad commercial? Not even a movie? Oh my God, I my husband's just laughing now. He says, it's okay. And I mean, my kids have been gone for a long time. My son is going to be 34. My daughter just turned 30. So they've moved out a while back, but I think, and I know, and you know too, we will always feel very, very connected to our children, no matter where they are, how old they are. But Sometimes these emotions are also tied to the hormonal changes in menopause. And in most cases, it coincides with the emptiness. You may feel sad that the kids are already grown. You worry that you didn't help them more than you have while they were growing up. And my son, when I said, so how tell me about your childhood? How was it living with me as a single mom? And of course, your sister as a single mom, divorced and all this. And he said, you know, mom, I wish you stayed home more with me. And I felt guilty. I thought, oh, my goodness, I did so many other things. I had a job and I saw some of my friends. And especially when you're in a divorced household, you have weekends off. But I did feel guilty and I said, you know, I'm me and I have to be me. And I feel like I was home as much as I could. You also might be nervous about your marriage or your relationship and and the state it's in. Or another big one is too, we're afraid of getting older and becoming useless. Yeah. And then also anxiety about your children. 
as I mentioned earlier. But this is a normal feeling. But if it takes over and you call them several times a day to check in with them to see if they have everything and if everything's going well or if the thing they told you about they're going to do worked out, if this behavior is taking over and keeping you in a constant state of anxiety, you need to do something about it. And I'll talk about this in a little bit. But trust yourself that you raise them to be responsible and smart people. That you got to trust yourself that you did the right thing and the best thing you could. And based on my example just a minute ago, I did the best I could. So now it's time for you to give them wings to fly. Some people are more likely than others to experience the emptiness syndrome. Uh, some research suggests that full-time, full-time parents are more likely to have emptiness syndromes because of the following reasons. These are the people who can't live alone. Now, I love living by myself and I never pictured myself getting remarried. And I was like, this is great. I can do what I want to do when I want to do it. No strings attached. But not everybody is like that. Then there's those who struggle with their marriages. So if you were struggling with your marriage while the kids were home and now you're looking at an empty nest stuck with your significant other. And then there are those who identified themselves or identified their role as a parent only. You may have left uh, left your job and became a full-time mom. And that's all you did. You went to all the PT meetings. You did all the sports activities. That's all you did. That's all you talked about. And now the kids are gone. What are you going to do? What are you going to talk about? There is nothing to talk about anymore in regard to your kids or child. And you have to find something else that you want and love talking about. So if you fall in those three categories, I'm sure when I just mentioned all this, that you live alone, you're struggling with your relationships, and that you are a full-time parent and nothing but a parent, it can be tough. But there are ways to feel comfortable with your emptiness and steps that you can take to move forward one strategy at a time. So let's dive into the five tips on how you get your spark back when you're feeling stuck in your empty nest. Number one seems like a no-brainer, but it's important to take care of your physical and your mental health. You've been so busy all these years that you kept your health checks to a minimum. I know for sure it's like weeks are flying by with everybody needs shots and if somebody get a cold then the next person gets injured at a soccer game or whatever it is. You're constantly running around taking everybody and making sure that they are okay and healthy. But of course, we all know that it takes hours out of our day to do those checkups. Mm-hmm. Yep, so you drive there, you sit in the waiting room, and then finally the doctor shows up, and then you have the appointment. You get the idea. But now, with the extra time, make time to do your own health overhaul. One of the things that I always talk about as I'm a coach for breast cancer survivors is to get your annual mammogram. Don't put it off. If you have said for years, I'm fine, I don't need it, now is the time to call your gynecologist and make that appointment. Or even your first colonoscopy. Yeah, the dreaded colonoscopy that you've heard about that you should do, recommended by the doctors after the age of 50. And it is so helpful because it is early detection and early detection can help save lives. I know I sound a little bit like a commercial, but it's so true. As unpleasant as some of those procedures are, 
They are necessary to keep you healthy well into the future. Make an appointment with your physician or gynecologist and rule out any underlying health conditions that you might not be aware of. So we have the mammogram, we have the colonoscopy, but we also have, because of menopause, we have changes in our hormone level. We have thyroid, uh, maybe an underlying thyroid condition that you're not aware of. of. Get a full-on checkup with the blood work, not just the vitamin D and the calcium levels. Ask for an in-depth blood work. Ask for what you deserve is a comprehensive checkup. And if you are not already, start to exercise. You have more time for yourself now. And what better way to get healthier and stronger? You know, the Mayo Clinic says that the links between depression, anxiety, and exercise aren't entirely clear. But working out and other forms of physical activity, well, gardening, walking, you know it, just being active, can ease symptoms of depression or tension and make you feel better. Exercise is good for you, one of my mottos. But how does exercise help with depression and anxiety? So I always say, move more. Even though exercise may be the last thing you want to do because you're just not feeling it. But once you get started, you're releasing the little happy hormones and endorphins and other brain chemicals that make you feel good. It's, compare it to if you are a walker and your goal is to do a 5K run. The beginning is painful. Let's just not sugarcoat it. It's painful. Your feet may hurt. Your back may ache a little bit. You can't breathe. And you feel like a, yeah, you're not cut out, cut out for a 5K. But that's okay. If you just keep putting one foot in front of the other, you'll get to that 5K. But the beginning is always, oh, do I have to? So start with something you love doing, like gardening, and perhaps take it a step further and go for a walk each day. It doesn't have to be far. If you are out of shape, as I always say, anything counts. Moving more helps you, number one, get out of the house and away from your regular environment, helps you enjoy some fresh air and some sunshine possibly, and you might even meet some neighbors that you can chat with. Spend about 30 minutes each day walking, biking, running, taking a dance class, gardening, cleaning the house. You know, you get the idea. The more active, the better you feel. And if you've been following me, you know that I love Pilates. And I can't talk enough about the benefits of Pilates, but they're strengthening your core, their bone uh, strengthening, bone density strengthening, increases your bone density, lengthening of the muscles, low impact in nature. They're just great. And there's so many exercises that you can do in the Pilates repertoire. You don't need to have on any of the machines like a reformer or a Cadillac or a wonder chair, but you can do them in the convenience of your home with your body and maybe a resistance band or a ball. Check out my Fasted and Fit membership with three free videos for you to try out and see if that might be something you enjoy. For, from Pilates to strength training and stretching, a whole bunch of exercises, anywhere from five minutes to up to 20 minutes that any em empty nester mom can do, no matter where you are in the world, because you may not stay home all the time. So this is super portable. And again, I will leave a link in the show notes so you can join the Fasted and Fit membership. In addition to reducing stress and anxiety, Staying active will also help you reduce weight gain, reduce body fat, and help you get more energy. Like I said, menopause and emptiness go hand in hand, and you have a double whammy 
if you're affected deeply by the, by the loss of your children leaving the house. Another point is sleep. Get enough sleep. Sleep is often an overlooked component in dealing with anxiety and stress in our lives. Getting a good night's sleep is so essential to also get more energy, lose body body weight, deal with stress. Sleep is like the magic bullet. And I know it's hard to sometimes get a good night's sleep. So check out episode 12 on the Pursue Your Spark podcast titled, Get More Sleep, Get More Energy. And finally, in our category of Taking care of your physical and mental health is, of course, eating healthy and nutritious meals. You no longer have to cook for the entire family and instead make meals that are right for your body and health. Ideal for a woman over 50. Well, I may be biased, but may I recommend meal planning or meal prepping? Meal planning or prepping will make sure you eat well-balanced meals. And that doesn't involve hours in the kitchen or complicated recipes or buying things that you just need for one meal. I'm the kind of woman, I want an action plan that's actionable. I want to get it done. I want to have time for all the other things I love in my life and move on. So check out my post, five easy meal prep tips that any beginner can do. Yeah, I've done my homework, so to speak, prior to recording today's episode. But self-care is often neglected during our years of raising children, and it extends way beyond the tips mentioned above. And of course, check out my post on self-care the key to a balanced life. And as I said, all the links will be in the show notes, so all you have to do is click and get to it. Self-care is more than getting a massage. Also, that is very nice. And taking steps towards a stronger, healthier second spring is essential. That's what self-care is. It's mind and body. So we talked a lot about the body, the health, exercise, eating, stress reduction, good sleep. But if you feel you are just not cutting the corner, then number two is hire a therapist. If you're feeling stuck and nothing seems to help, then a therapist may be the next step. This person is better than talking to your friends because they are specifically trained to deal with emotional hurdles that we can't overcome on our own. Our friends can only take so much of our whining and complaining and telling them the same story over and over. And they're not trained to help us with really good advice. Their advice is well-meaning and based on their experience, where there's nothing wrong because there can be some really good tips that we get from our friends. But it may not help you get out of that slump, out of that sadness, out of your depression. And I want you to consider hiring a therapist. A therapist can also prescribe medications if necessary. While this is not a long-term solution, it may help. It may help you get over the hump and become unstuck. So talk to your doctor about your depression and anxiety to get the help you need. Don't be shy. That's what they're there for. That's what they're paid for. And that's what they're trained for, to help us. So don't feel shy. Don't feel embarrassed to reach out. Go for it. Number three is reconnect with friends. I know that. And I know that you probably experienced that too. Parenting limits the time spent in social settings. And usually, and that's from my experience, back in the days when the kids were home, my friends were the circle of other parents that were in my kids' class or in their sporting events or activities. But now that the kids are gone, I don't have those friends anymore. We don't have the same interests because all we talked about 
was the kids, the activity, the school things, not about what I wanted to do or if I've been skiing or if I've been doing whatever I've been doing, going to salsa classes. So now that the kids have left home, you have more time for getting coffee, eating lunch out, or grabbing dinner with your friends any time of the day, any time of the week. So not only limited to Saturday nights when we have a babysitter. And it also is not based on your kid's schedule anymore. If you have been a parent with a child that's on a, a ice skating team and a traveling ice skating team, you had spent weekends just going places because their team was traveling. No longer. The time is yours. Start by filling out your calendar with fun outings with your friends, as this is definitely something to look forward to. So remember I started off the episode with nothing on the calendar? Get to it. Connect with friends regularly. If you like texting, text them or give them a call. Uh, especially if they're empty nesters too or about to become empty nesters, you're more likely to have the same aspirations and desires for what's next in life. As women, we love to share our experiences. I sure do. And I always talk a lot. I have a lot to share. (laughs) Especially now you can share what works for you and what doesn't. We are in the same boat. We're all in this together. But if you have an underlying more deeper sadness, get that therapy. But friends are a great outlet and you can actually start putting things on the books together. How about instead of going out for a glass of wine, you take a Pilates class, you go for a walk, you actually are active, or you take a trip together. Research suggests that social connections have a positive impact on your health. In addition to reducing harmful stress levels, connecting with friends can trigger the release of stress-reducing hormones. Hey, What's not to like about spending a time with our friends having a great time? Now, I want to add to this from my own experience that sometimes I think that my friends don't want to spend time with us. They rarely reach out. They don't call. They don't send emails usually. It's, It's between a text and a Facebook message usually. And I'm thinking... Don't they want to spend time with us? But guess what? As soon as I reach out, they're like, yeah, when, how, where? So don't be held back by them not reaching out to you. Because that's what I thought. I said, you know, if they're not reaching out to me, I'm not. Because they don't want to spend time with me. Forget that. Go for it. If that person says no a whole bunch of times to the activities you recommend, you may want to rethink that friendship. But overall, I found that when I reach out, and I just actually did that this month, I filled out or filled up our schedule. I just said, who haven't we talked to in a while? Who haven't we seen? Where are they? What are they doing? Let's get together. So keep that in mind. Number four is discover your interests that one of your kids or your husband, which could be part of it too, but gone are the times when you can't do what you love to do or explore new hobbies or interests. And after years on the soccer field or at the swim meet, I know I keep saying soccer field because I used to be a soccer mom and a soccer coach for my kids. So that comes to first to mind for me, but it could be ballet or acting classes. So fill in the blank, whatever your kids used to do tennis lessons, but well, I used to be a soccer coach. So what can I say? It's time to put your needs and desires first. So take advantage of this opportunity. Many women who focus only on their kids, kids and their kids needs are stumped when they find that they have no interests. If you're the mom who just melted into your kid's life and didn't follow up on your own interests, ask your friends what they do or family members and get inspirations from their ideas. Don't dismiss anything and at least give those ideas a try. 
You might like to take a cooking class, learn to paint, or go back to school. So get to it. There are so many possibilities. I have mentioned salsa dancing earlier. Well, I wanted to go out and meet other people. After my divorce, I felt very lonely, and that was still while my kids were at home. I signed up for a dance class, and I said, well, why not? I don't know how to do formal dancing. I'm more the the free dancer. It's like some people call it the hippie dancer. And I say, well, why don't I learn some ballroom dancing kind of things? So I signed up for a class that had tango, salsa, cha-cha-cha, and something else. And um, so I started taking the class, and I was the only person in the class. So the class was not very popular. But the good thing was I had that salsa, that dance teacher all to myself. And I fell in love with salsa. And so on the weekends, I started going out, taking lessons. I had my favorite places here in Washington, D.C. with my favorite teachers. And I met all these people because we all were there to learn to dance, not to pick up dates. But we all loved dancing. And that's the reason we got together. And uh, I joined a group back then called the Salsa Meetup. And the group still exists it's in the Washington, D.C. area. So if you want to go dancing, salsa dancing in a safe, fun, and friendly environment, join the Salsa Meetup in Washington, D.C. You can find it easily by Googling. Remember our friend Google. And number five, finally on to number five, rekindle your relationship. Let's face it, with many of us, pushing our marriage or relationships to the side because we're busy and things are just fine the way they go. And we might even do date night once per week. Yeah, squeeze it in somehow, maybe a quick pizza and a movie or whatever it is because you need more sleep. But there's more to a happy marriage and relationship. Unfortunately, some marriages may become stagnant when the kids leave. And... That was the glue that held the marriage together. About 25% of divorces in the U.S. occur when couples reach the kids-to-college stage in their marriage. So keep that in mind. If you find yourself stuck in your relationship, ask for help again from a professional therapist. Not a divorce coach but somebody that helps you glue yourselves together to find common interests, to appreciate each other again. And this may also be better than getting advice from your friends who may be happily married, or maybe they put up a front looking happily married. Who knows? A therapist, as I said earlier too, can help you work through conflict and feelings. You know, without the kids around, You have all kinds of opportunities to rekindle some romance and passion. What about a romantic weekend with hiking or a fancy uh, dinner during the week? Uh Uh-huh. Or taking a class to learn how to give each other massages. We did that. That was actually a great idea because my husband turned out to be a genius at at, uh, giving a massage. So, ha, a double win for me. But you get the idea. Take some time to adjust to being around just with the two of you without distractions. My husband and I now are training together for triathlons. I never thought I would do that. I'm the runner, hike it, the marathon runner, the ultra marathon runner. And uh, you may have heard before that I've learned to swim just about now. It's <laughs> time flies. Haha, <laughs> makes me aging is um, seven years ago, but we decided that even though he's stronger and faster than I am, we still can go out on a bike ride together. We still can go run together. We can go swim together. And when you're swimming, your head's on the water, so you don't talk a lot, but you go somewhere and, and you chat on the way there and from, or you bike and then you're like, hey, you know, Uh, bike for a little while together and then everybody takes off so it's not like you're glued together the entire time but it's a great way to reconnect on in a in also healthy (laughs) if i may say healthy and active way 
So just some ideas to mull around. So I'm a big fan of lists. Write down what comes across that you thought interesting. And a list, remember, a list is just a list. You can take away, add to it. And then once you have some things that you might enjoy, start doing them. Booking these sessions or buying the bike or making that appointment for the romantic getaway or even when you're planning a trip, which is what I love to do too. We do that together. I'm the person who finds the fun activities and the things to do. My husband is the planner. It's like, here's where we can stay. Here's how we get there. This is all like boring to me, but it's great for him. That's his strength. And so we make it happen. So you see, you can get unstuck and ignite your spark after the kids are gone. No, that's why my brand, my podcast is called Pursue Your Spark. It'll take time and effort, but it's so worth it. Start with a tip that sounds the easiest that I mentioned today that you can work on. And then later on, tackle another one and so on. Don't get overwhelmed. Just pick one thing. If it's your health you want to hone in on, go for the health. If you want to connect with friends, go for that one. Whatever seems the easiest to do. You have so much time to find the right path that takes you to a vibrant second half. So let's take action and let's do it. Let's get unstuck in our empty nest. And I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear how the episode resonated, what your thoughts are on the empty nest, what you like to know more about on the empty nest. As always, I have so many ideas and so much information to share, and we're in this together. So please reach out to me at Heike Yates on Instagram, on Facebook, I'm Heike Yates, pursue your spark, and tell me how you are getting on with your empty nest. And with that, my friends, until next time, ciao!